Hi there, and welcome to Sweethearts or Rivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. And this time we're going to be playing Guild, Guild Hall. Hall. Woo! And Guild Hall Job Fair. Yes. Yep. They're very similar. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you what the stats are for Guild Hall. Very small writing on the back of the box. <laughs> it's for two to four players. It's going to take you about, holy moly, that's small, 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Yep. And it's good for ages 12 and up. There you go. And yeah. it's by? It, it, this copy we have is published by AEG. And we're going to be taking a look at Guild Hall Job Fair, which has the exact same rules for stats. Has the exact same stats. Yes, and yep. the exact same rules. And the exact same rules. Right. It yep. just has different cards. There you go. So we're going to set up for a game. Yep. Show you how it plays. Come back and give you our final thoughts. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> So what we have here set up is our two-player game of Guildhall. Yep. Yeah. We're using just the cards from Guildhall, none of the cards from Job Fair. Right. Yep. They're a little bit more advanced. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So what's this game about? Well, you're in the Dark Ages, and you're trying to organize all the different kinds of uh, job people, tradesmen, workers into your own guild. So you've got your guild hall here, and then there's six different kinds of jobs that you're trying to get people into. And what you're looking for is to complete a chapter. And to complete a chapter, you need um, the same characters, one of each color, and there's five colors. Right. Once you get those into your guild hall, you flip them over, you get a completed chapter, and you can trade them in for... Victory points, which is victory how you points. win the game. Yeah. You play until we get 20 victory points. Absolutely. I mean, until I get 20 victory points. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So how is it that you get the people from your hand into your guild hall? Okay. So we each have a hand of six cards to start with. On your turn, you have two actions. And the things you can do with your actions is you can... Um, discard as many cards as you want, including zero, and then you draw back up until you have a hand of six. So that's one action. Uh, you can play a card from your hand down here, and then take what that character does, and you know resolve it. Um, that's another action. Uh, if you have a completed chapter, you can spend that chapter to get one of the victory point cards, uh, and that's the third action. That's pretty much all you can do. Where the gameplay comes in is the, the different characters and what they do when you play them. Yeah. Once you've done your two actions and you're done, any cards out here you've played get put into your guild hall. Which is really important because a lot of the cards, what they do when you resolve them depends on how many of those characters you already have in your guild hall. Right. So, for example, I could play a dancer and that's going to give me a bonus because I already have a dancer. But I can't then put that dancer in my guild hall and play another dancer to get like an improved bonus. No, they stay out here until the end of my turn. Right. So there's a little bit of tricky gameplay. Well, they have to do a job for you so that you know they're good. And yeah. then you can employ them in your guild hall. Exactly. Right. Right. So that's guild hall. Um, it's pretty quick. We just randomly chose first player with a dice. That yep. was me. Mm -hmm. And what you do, we get each dealt nine cards. Yep. You can then exchange... A number of cards if you don't like them yep. with cards off the top of the deck so if I discarded two I would get two and put it back yep. in my hand and then I get to put down three people in my guild hall to start with yeah so we both do that so we still have a hand of six we got our three uh, individuals in our guild hall already right and then um, we put out five of the victory point cards and some of them will give you more points than others but if they give you less points, they usually have a special um, ability that gets resolved when you right. buy them as well. Yeah. And then some of them, like the seven point, takes two completed chapters before you can buy it. Right. But you also and get seven points in two actions. Two extra actions. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So in my starting guild hall, I have a farmer. Yep. So if I have one farmer in my guild hall and I play a farmer out here, I get a victory point. Mm -hmm. 
and it progressively gets better as you put more farmers in. Yeah. So all the cards are like that. Yep. This historian allows me to take the top card off of the discard pile and place it in my guild hall if I can. Mm-hmm. If I play a historian out here. Yep. And then dancers. Well, Justin already said. You play a dancer, you get as many cards from the draw pile as you have dancers into your hand, and you get an extra action. Yep. And uh, I have a trader in uh, my guild hall, and they allow you to take cards from uh, your guild hall and swap them with cards of your opponent's guild hall. A very important aspect of the game is each of the characters, there's five different colors, and you can never have the same character in the same color. So I've got a yellow trader. I can't play another yellow trader. No. And that, that's the way you got to try to get all five colors for that completed chapter. Right. Yeah. There's two other characters. They'll come out, and we'll explain them as they come out. Right. All right. So let's see if I can get an, a character that we don't have on the board already. Right. Oh, we didn't set the time for about ten minutes. Ten minutes. And then we'll play until it rings, and then we'll stop and... See how we did. Yeah. So, we mentioned, I don't know if we mentioned it, but assassins. Assassins, there we did There are not. assassins. So, what he does, or she, because there can be lady it's assassins. Maybe she's in disguise with a beard or something. <laughs> anyway, I don't have any assassins in my um, guild hall. Yep. So, I have the bottom level uh, ability. Yep. So, I can dispose of one character from Justin's guild hall and put in the discard pile. Awesome. Which will be the dancer. Oh, my dancer's gone. Yep. Dance into the discard pile. Very sad. So my second my second action will be oh, the other card. A weaver. Okay. So I can take one card from my hand and put it in. Directly into your guild hall. To my guild hall. Yep. So it's kind of cool because you get those cards in your guild hall quick but you don't get the the, the ability off of them. They just immediately go in. So I'll put my trader in. There we go. Trader, not traitor. <laughs> so now that I've done my two actions, yep. I can include these people in my guild hall. And you've got one of every card in the game. I do. Nice. All right. Your turn. My turn. So I'm going to get two actions. What would I like to do? Well, I was going to do that, but then you killed my dancer off. Oh, sorry. That's not cool. She danced too much and was exhausted. That's all right. I play my historian, which allows me to take the mm -hmm. top card off the discard pile and put it directly into. You didn't even my lose her. <laughs> what are you crying over? Then I'm going to play a purple dancer, <laughs> which allows me to get an extra card because it's one card for every dancer in my guild hall. Put it directly in my hand and get another action. Get another action. And I'll play a red assassin. I'm going to kill the other assassin. Just because they looked funny. <laughs> <laughs> this was a poor disguise. A poor disguise. Like, okay. I can tell you're a woman with a little bit of soot down Whatever. there. Whatever. on there? And that's my two actions. Playing a dancer. So oh. I'll get to draw one card. Yep. Have an extra action. Okay. And look at that. I drew a farmer. Oh, lovely. So I have one farmer. I get one victory point. There you as, go. Thank you very much. And I get another action. Well, is it going to be him or him? Him or him? It's going to have to be a trader. So one card from your guild my hall. guild hall into your guild yep. hall. We're swapping guild hall swap cards. Swapping, swapping. I'll swap my trader. For my purple dancer. Oh, purple dancer. I thought you were going after my farmer. I should have went after your farmer. But I like purple and I like dancers. There you go. Sounds Alrighty. weird, but. Your turn. My turn. Okay, so what am I going to do? I am going to play. Interesting. I'm going to play a trader. A blue trader. Yeah, that works. I already got two traders in my guild hall, which means I can trade two of my guild hall cards for two of her guild hall cards. Uh oh. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. That's, that's well, I know what you're good. taking because you mentioned farmers. Yeah, I could take you two farmers. Oh, you sound like you weren't going to think of that. Oh, no, I was definitely doing that. Oh, okay. And I could trade them for uh, a historian and an assassin. Okay. 
I'm not going to cry over that. And then I've got one more action. What can I do with that other action? I am going to discard three cards. I'm going to draw up to six. And then my trader comes into here, and I am done. So I have one card left, and I can play him. Okay. So it's a trader. Ooh. I only so have one, one, for one, so it's one for one. Yep. I am going to trade in this assassin for your blue dancer. Ouch. And then I am out of cards, so I have to discard zero to get six. Mm -hmm. And that's my turn. It's your turn? Yep. Okay. My go. It is. All right, so first I'm going to play a purple weaver. I don't have any weavers yet, so it allows me to take one card from my hand and put it right into my guild hall. And that's going to be a yellow assassin. And then I'm going to play a green assassin, because now I've got two assassins. I can oh, kill off two of your cards. Justin! So let's start with your blue dancer, gone. What did she ever do to you? I don't know. She left me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vindictive, I guess. I guess. <laughs> and let's take your green historian. That is nice. There's my two actions. <laughs> she left me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing an assassin. Ouch! Yeah. Kill one off. One off one Bite off. it, yeah. farmer. Oh, which one? Yellow farmer, Yellow Joe. Yellow farmer's gone. Okay. And Ouch. then... Man, you guy raises <laughs> pigs. Can't get a break. <laughs> no. And I'll play a weaver. Okay. So, one that's card one card. Right into your guild hall. I hope I have one that matches. Yep. There you go. All righty. So those are into my guild hall now. Cool. Your turn. My turn. What am I doing? Hmm. I'm going to play a purple historian. Get the farmer back. What in the world? <laughs> yeah, that was really good. I like that. That was good. All right. And you know what? I'm going to play a red historian and take the top card <laughs> back. There Justin. we go. Here we go. Worked for me. Here we go. So all the cards in my hand are doubles. I can't play them. Discard for yep. the six. Okay. That's my first action. Now let's see if I can play any of these ones. Kind of hoping I could finish a chapter, but I don't think I can. I could play this one. Ah, another assassin. Well... I don't know how that farmer came back to life, but he's undead, and I don't trust him. So he's gone. Yeah, he can go back. Poor farmer, just dying, <laughs> coming back to life, dying yeah. again. You can't have vampiric farmers running around. No. no. Maybe he's just like a cat farmer. He's got nine lives. Bad for business. It's two so far. Cheer go. Am I go? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to discard none, but I am going to draw up to six. So two, three, four, five, six. I got a hand of six. And what do I have in here now? And I have some good stuff. So that was one. And I'm going to play a historian. So I've got three historians, which allows me to look through the discards and find one card to place directly into. Oh, but you're probably not going to look. You're just going to take Vampiric Farmer Joe. No. Oh, okay. I'm going to get a purple assassin. Oh, of course you are. And that was my two actions. It's your go. I'm going to play a trader. Oy. I will trade my... Blue assassin? <laughs> no. <laughs> <coughs> my blue weaver. Oh, awesome. Stacy. Stacy. She can go work for you. Yay. And I'll take your blue farmer. Oy. I should take purple because it's prettier. But... you got to do it again because you've got three traders. So oh, two. I have to do another one. Yep. It's a sad story. Yeah, it is. So why don't I just trade Take. you this dancer? Oh, yay. For Farmer Mitch. Purple? Yeah, thanks. And then... Fantastic. I'll play my second action as a farmer and get one victory point. Blarg. Thank you very much. <laughs> I had to take it myself. Now it's your go. My go? Yep. All right. First, I'm going to play a dancer, and I'm going to get one card, <laughs> and then another action. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. What am I going to play now? Hmm. Nothing. 
And you're going to trade them in? One, two, three, four, five. Five cards. Gone. Drop to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because I had nothing in my hands that I could actually use. Because that's the game. You just continue on until yep. someone gets 20 points. Yeah. And they win. And yep. that's it. That's the whole thing. I think the only thing we didn't really show was um, when you do get a full chapter, you it immediately... It scrunches up. And you put it to the side. Yep. And then you can use those as an action to buy, buy one of those. And, and then it frees up that spot to put that kind of card down again. Yep. Um, you can save these up. So you can get two of them for yeah. one action to get seven. But you can never have more than three completed chapters kind of hanging around at, at the same time. Right. And uh, the other thing with a completed chapter is once you've got that chapter flipped over, it's done. Um, it can't be affected by cards. It can't affect other cards, so it kind of makes it safe. Nobody can mess with your completed chapter. Right. Yeah, and so that is Guildhall. Guildhall. We're going to tidy up a little bit, and then we're going to be back and let you know what we think. Right on. We are back. We're back from Guildhall. From the Guildhall, yep. All right, so Guildhall. Yep. What did you think of the components? The components are cards, and they're very good. They're a nice quality card. They're a good quality card. We haven't yep. sleeved them, and when you shuffle cards a lot, sometimes you need to sleeve them. Yep. But I mean, you saw us shuffle them on the, the play, uh, the playthrough. The playthrough. Yep. With the setup. Mm -hmm. And we shuffle them like that all the time, and none of them have dings or anything on them, so that's no, cool. no. And then the other components we have are the coins. Yep. And they're a nice, thick, heavy cardboard. Yep. Yep. Some of them didn't punch out that great. Oh yeah, that's yep. right. We had to glue some of the paper back on them. Yeah. Uh, one small gripe, uh, two small gripes, I guess. Um, one, when you get Guild Hall and then you get Job Fair, the two coins, they're the same, but they're not the same size. But they're not worth like anything different, and they're just it's like it's only a, you can only really tell when you see them together or hold them together. Mm -hmm. That was just weird. Why couldn't they just have simply been the same size? I think that it was just an oversight. Yeah. Or maybe they thought it was cool. I don't know. I don't know. It was kind of annoying. Yeah. And the same thing, as another small little gripe is when you look at the, the two decks of cards, Guild Hall and Job Fair, uh, when you look at them kind of this side right here. Oh, you can tell. These are quite yeah. light. And then the other ones are quite dark. So, so when you mix them together, you know yeah. if you're getting one from yeah. Job Fair or one from the original. Yeah. Yeah. So... Again, minor gripes, but the quality themselves is yeah. actually really great. Like, but they were probably just printed at a different place or something. Yeah. Who knows what yeah. happened, but anyway. What about the artwork and all that? The artwork is good. It really goes with that era of game. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it really it blends well to the theme of the game. Yeah. Like, well, the artwork really is the only thing that brings in the theme of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is it is done rather well. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, like some of the iconography that you kind of miss when you're getting the gameplay is um, you have uh, these little kind of symbols it's for each true. of the yeah. kinds of guilds. Um, the different colors have different uh, symbols going down here. So all the purple have these like chevrons, whereas oh, the right. green have shields. So a little bit different there. It's funny that you say that because I always notice that rose on the dancer. Yep. Just because it stands out. Mm -hmm. But I kind of didn't even notice there's... Yep. They all have their uh, own symbol. And I didn't notice this, like you just said. Yep. That's funny. Different. Yeah. And then it's once a you, good touch. Yeah. And the iconography down here is pretty good yep. once you get used it's to it. It's straightforward. Yep. Yeah. Once you know what all the different symbols mean. Yeah. What do you think about the strategy of this game? Uh, the strategy... Um, let's see. There is a little tiny bit of luck, but not a lot. And that's just the, the shuffle of the cards. Mm -hmm. Very easily mitigated by all the different abilities that the cards do. And in this, we're talking both Guild Hall and Job Fair. Right. Um, now, strategy and tactics. Um, there's, there's more tactics than there are strategy because you got to see what you got in your hand, what's out on the board, and what's available. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly trying to do the best thing possible. Yeah. The strategy, there's just one. Get your chapters, buy points, win before the other person. So right. it's tactic heavy. Mm -hmm. Now, once you get past the two games as separate games and you combine them, then you can get into some more strategy because you can actually do some deck building. Um, Guildhall comes with six professions. Job Fair comes with six professions. And mm -hmm. you can play them separately right. or you can mix and match to play a game with six different professions kind of a mix and match. So you can really kind of tailor your deck yeah. in different ways. Well, so tailoring your draw pile. 
Yeah. Because it's not like we have separate decks it's to true. play with. Yeah. Not yeah. You're not your deck, but yeah. Your draw game. pile building. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's interesting that way. The downside with that is I can take Guild Hall out, open it up, shuffle, and we can play. Mm-hmm. Or job fair. But if I want to do that kind of game building, yeah. it takes a lot more um, investment of time. Because we've tried a couple of different combinations, and some of them work okay, and some of them do not work at all. Yeah. <laughs> not at and all. And I'm sure you can mix and match a few of the different jobs and like be get a few combinations that just overpower everything. Yeah. Yeah. So... It requires a little bit more investment, but uh, um, yeah, but it's another way of playing. Exactly. Yeah, it's another option. Um, how about the complexity? I would have to say that the complexity is quite high for this game. Mm-hmm. Just because, well, the base game you get the six, but once yes. you add in job fair, now you've got 12. Yeah. And the job fair ones are a little bit more advanced. Yeah. So you definitely want to start out with the base. And then as you get used to that and kind of, if it feels samey, hmm. either play with the second one or just add in a few and take out a couple. Yeah, that's true. That's a good way of exploring the different options. Right. Um, with Guildhall, four of the uh, professions, the Assassin, Dancer, Farmer, and Historian, are really kind of straightforward when you take their action. The Trader and the Weaver mm-hmm. get a little bit more complicated because there's trading going on right. and switching around. So in the base game, Guild Hall, you know, not too complex. Now, most of these for the job fair, most of the professions have to do with a lot of trading. So things are shifting around right. and it does it does make it much more complex. Like the bricklayer, you trade things with the draw pile. Yeah. And then the hunter, you trade things out of the discard pile from your guild. Yeah. And then the peddler, you're going to trade things from your hand to your opponent's guild. Yeah. But then you're going to have to uh, put something in your hand. Yeah. From you're, their... s- you're swapping from your hand to their guild hall and back. Back, yeah. yeah. And then the robber, that she's straightforward. You're just going to steal something from the hand. Of your uh, opponent. Of direct, the opponent. But directly into your guild hall. Right, That's directly into tricky. your guild hall. Yep. Yeah. And then the Scholar, you can take cards from the top of the deck, put them in your guild hall. He's kind of straightforward, too. Yeah. And the Tax Collector, he's a little wonky. Because he's going to give you points for how many Tax Collectors you have in your guild hall. But then you... you got to give your opponent one of the cards from your guild hall into theirs. Right. Yeah. So that's a little yeah. tricky. Yeah. I'm not saying these are crazy complex. No, no. But they're more complex than they're more, the ones from the guild hall. They're more advanced. Yeah. For sure. Now, where that's going to be great is if you really like that kind of puzzly shifting things around and, aha, I came out on top. Yes, it's true. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of cool. But I find, well, the rule book was pretty straightforward, right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's not a complex game. No. The only thing in the complexity is to learn how each card works. Yeah. Which that part could sometimes be a little bit hard to teach people. Yeah. But overall, it's not a extremely difficult game. No. Three to, actions, pretty straightforward. Yeah, you just have to get used to just the, the cards. icons and how they work. Yep. Yeah. All right. What about playability? Uh, playability, uh, very playable. To me, to be perfectly honest, I find it easier just to take Guild Hall out, shuffle, and play. And it's very playable. Set up some breeze, you're going, you're just playing, and you can get used to the six professions and how they interact so that you can really kind of work on your skill of manipulating it to win. Right. Um, same thing with job fair. You can get used to those six. As soon as you start shifting them around, every time you shift them around, you've got to kind of relearn how they're going to interact. Right. So that, to me anyway, is a little bit less playable. If you really like exploring that kind of building of the game in different combinations, mm-hmm. then that's going to be a plus for you. Just, exactly. It's, it's just not a plus for me. Right. Yeah. Because this is the kind of game where you want to play it a lot. And you want to invest a lot of time yeah. Yeah. in learning the different synergies between each different card type. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for a number of players, it goes two to four. Uh, it works. It scales really, really well. Yeah. Um, when it, it works really well as a two-player game, kind of a back and forth that goes really, really quick. Mm-hmm. And I really like that. When you add more players, things shift around a little bit more. And you keep each other on your toes a little bit more, but mm-hmm. that's okay. It still works really well. Yeah. And the game length is excellent. It's a really quick game, which it is, is nice. Yep. Yep. 
Um, so. Does this job have the awesomeness or the cuteness? Um, I would say I, I don't think it has the cuteness. Well, I don't think I have to say it then. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, it's just yeah. cards and the art yeah. is good art for the theme of the game. Yeah. But it's not cute art. No. The cutest thing about this game is they have a purple color. There you go. Purple cuteness. Yeah. Purple and they have dancers. Well, you might think she's cute, but let me look at these men here. There you go. Are there any cute men? The assassin's kind of sexy. See, I mean, what was it? The Dark Ages? <laughs> yeah, it's the Dark Ages. I don't Not a lot of cuteness. Not a lot of cute going on yeah. in the Dark Ages, I don't think. I don't know. I wasn't there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as for awesomeness, really the awesomeness that's going to be in Guildhall and Job Fair is going to be um, really your own skill at manipulating the different um the yeah. different abilities. Pulling off a few cool moves. Yeah, yeah, the synergies and stuff. That's where the awesomeness of this game is going to be. It's not in the art. It's not in the components. It's not in the in that. It's just that I did this, 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 and look at that. I'm winning. Right. Yep. Um, how would you rate this game? This is a good game. A good game? Yep. It's a good game. And the reason I say it's good instead of excellent is because it's one of those games where, like we said, you have to invest a lot of time. Yeah. Um. Because if you don't want to invest that time and you just want to play with the base set, it's going to get samey fast. This is true. Yeah. Yep. But, see, there's other games that I always pick over Guildhall. So I'm not investing the time to yeah. learn all the different synergies. Yep. So it doesn't give me that awesome feeling. Yeah. I would agree. Definitely a good game. Yeah. Um, either one. Uh, I would go with Guildhall first to get the, the base game down. And then once you start getting that... If you're looking for something a little bit more challenging, a little bit more um, tricksy, uh, you could definitely mm -hmm. get job fair. Yeah. Um, at that point, if you're start, if you're really getting into the game, if you're finding it better than just a good game, um, and you're looking for you know something new, that's when you can start mixing them. Again, right. not something we're into, but it's definitely an option available. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So do we finish the game as Sweethearts or Rivals? This game I would we have finish to as... say we finish Rivals. rivals. Yeah. Yeah, because if I have to assassinate your farmer ten times, I'm going to do it. And she has. <laughs> <laughs> that poor yellow that farmer just coming farmer. back from the dead. Just coming back. And he's coming back. And yeah. then they're dead. Well, coming back from the dead, he's a zombie. Of course, it's like, yeah, he's a zombie. Uh, anyway. Zombie farmers can farm pigs just like, I don't know. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> I guess maybe yeah. I'm being a little bit, you know, stereotypical of zombies. Yeah, they can't farm pigs. That has nothing pigs. to do with zombies. That has nothing to do with guild high. <laughs> Sorry, I got off topic. Anyway, yeah. rivals. I want Yeah, win. definitely rivals. There's yeah. not a lot of like, ooh, I feel like I'm a master of a guild hall and, or, or I'm really into the theme. There's not really oh, a lot of yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. It's... Uh, really really interesting mechanics and mm -hmm. how well you can manipulate them so yeah it's just it's a great game, game puzzle game. of a game yeah yeah yep so that's guild hall and job fair thank you thanks for watching see you next time later i'm gonna go resurrect a farmer <laughs> gross <laughs>